We recently were able to add the ability to accept food stamps, which we are hoping will increase the food ministry for the community as well. And it really does work food stamps, and there's no problems with any of that. And that is all I can say. Thank you very much. Okay, more is going to come and share with us the TLC report. And everybody knows I hate being up in front of So, TLC stands for the Lord Cares. And many of you have got the cards for your birthday, anniversaries. It's our way in the church to reach out and participate in the main events in your life. They are important. The good ones, the bad ones, and they need to be recognized. And we send out about 25 cards a month. All of it is through donations. Um, say, we only spent $100 for stamps in a whole year. The rest is donated. Cards are all donated. So it is everybody's love that comes out when we come out and do the TLC. <laughs> So let's continue in worship. Nothing is impossible with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we're going to head into our stewards' report right now, which is a video. Enjoy what the stewards have done. You've already enjoyed it this year. Let's walk down memory lane. Provided 
a box, and um, we've also had some things from the pantry. So we did five boxes at Thanksgiving and five boxes at Christmas to families in need around the area. Um, bell ringing that we do down at Food Mart, um, Salvation Army. The, the money raised here in Wayland stays locally, and we raised over a thousand dollars this year to help families in need. Praise God for that. Um, Angel Tree and, and Toy Drive we collect. We have the, the name tags down on the tree downstairs where we collect gifts for um, families that can, may have some need at Christmas. And also the Toy Drive where we collect new and white reused toys and distribute them to families in the area. Um, we helped a, a definite number of 13 in the community this year. And then whatever is left from the Toy Drive is distributed equally between Pro Action and Bath. Um, Spa Ministries in Danceville and Spring Water Nazarene Church and they distribute the rest of the toys. Um, so when we had a phone call, Cheryl will get a hold of me and then I'm able with what, what God has provided for us to go ahead and share with others and try to share the message as well when we, when we go out and drop off the, the items. Christmas caroling, we went to five houses and two group homes this year and that's always a blessing. They, they bless us as much as we do when we go and we visit them in the home. Uh, Paul Coburn was heading up the co drive and keep helping keep many warm these cold winter months, the cold winter that we had. Um, and then also just praise that when, when um, the people that are helping work through local missions, when we ask for the food pantry to be restocked or whatever, that you as a congregation hear that call and put the food down there so it's available for those in need when, we're, when we have some contact. Um, and I just want to close with Matthew 25, verses 34 to 40. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink. When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did for me. God is going to praise God. It's just cool to hear what we've been doing. Andy's going to come and share about gym night. According to the research of the American Growth Institute, people who come to church come with an influence to do so by a friend or a relative. 79% of the time, uh, people come just because they've been asked. Uh, the fact that people are most likely to be influenced to attend a church when invited by a friend indicates the need to equip church goers with means to reach out to the friends and families. So, uh, statistics indicate that the way church is being done in North America it's not bringing good news to the majority of the people in an effective manner. Uh, American culture is one that is leisure-oriented, unfamiliar with the Bible and Christianity, and sports crazy. Um, the contemporary church can use sports and recreation alternative means uh, potentially captivate the attention of these people. Instead of viewing the general direction of the American culture as a negative, the church must recognize a tremendous opportunity for specialized ministries. Leisure hours become the most important time of a person's life. When people leave work, they expect a time for leisure, and sports amount to a large amount of that leisure time. A recent survey indicated 90% of Americans watch, read, or participate in a sport once a month, and 70% do so once a week. With so many people involved in recreation sports, the church can use sporting events as a unique opportunity. They are gathered in places for people, bridges for culture, and racial barriers. An area of ministry where people can use their gifts, talents, and abilities for the community's sake. And they offer an avenue to gain visibility to the community. The ministry of the local church can discover many opportunities for reaching people and making recreation connections through sports ministry. Um, like servant evangelism, which is defined as uh, doing acts of kindness and generosity to show people the love of Christ, Sports evangelism has the potential to provide an avenue for the ministry that all Christians can embrace. Due to the fact that many people in this culture are interested in sports, the type of ministry seems to be a natural bridge between Christians and non-Christians. Um, as far as 
Um, what the larger churches are, are using uh, is sports ministry and connecting people. It's obviously, as it shows, sports is uh, one of the most important things in America. Actually, sports is probably the number one God in America. Um, but with all this, at our Lighthouse Gym Night, it used to be called extreme soccer, but we grew into more sports and needs. We average between 30 and 40 people a night. Some nights we get close to 40 just for the soccer. Uh, with two hours filled with uplifting, grand Christian music, and a break for a biblically truth-driven devotional given by one of the leaders, many decisions were made, including several people accepting the Lord. We did all that just for one person accepting the Lord, it'd be worth it. So we had many. We had many different decisions made. Our need now with the growth and other our need now with growth in other sports, we need leaders to rise up and take over the different segments. The volleyball segment, the basketball segment, or even the walking segment, or whatever sport uh, you feel called to lead. Uh, I need to keep my focus more on the soccer segment uh, because of the way it's continuing to grow and what we have to do with that. But I'd like you all to please pray about and see where God wants you to step up and help me. Many Christ through different sports. Uh, pray about it. Make sure we start now probably in December again. And anybody who wants to uh, any, have any further to lead an avenue of sports, just contact us. The list of great terms share with us the global mission portion this morning. Welcome to Sydney, Australia, mate. <laughs> okay, I'm across the street playing with Randy's stuff. <laughs> Sorry. Doing the trustees report, um, I'd like to give a special thanks to this incredible group, Steve Sick, our leader, fearless, and honorary member, his son, Colin. Thank you so much for all that you've both done beyond belief, above and beyond the call. Thank you. Tim Stoddard, Scott Ake. David Crocker, Randy Parker, Bill Weidman, Brad Hammers, all of us coming together, Springwater here in Whalen that we're meeting in, and across the street here at the CVS, which I'm videotaping in. We get to maintain all those properties from 
snow plowing in the winter, which seemed to have lasted the last 12 months, mowing the grass, weed eating, um, throwing down the weed killer, taking care of business, electrical, plumbing, got the new uh, water heater, woohoo! Oh, air conditioning. Let's not underestimate the power of staying cool in the summer. Uh, oh, we got a new coffee bar. Can't do without that, can we? No. I couldn't list for you all the things that have been done um, because they're, they're just weekly, daily maintenances. But what the trustees do, and if I could sum it up in a sentence, trustees are the managers of property so that they can facilitate ministry best, best, best. They're a part of getting this video connection for you. They're a part of running video to the basement so our children and parents can watch a video of what's happening upstairs so that they don't miss service because they have a child. We want to bless you, so let's make it work. They're part of giving us a system so that we can upload this to www.discoverlighthouse.org so that people can watch the sermons on their computer screen. So there are just so many angles to maintaining property. If it's maintaining property, it's putting up tents, tearing down tents, putting up chairs, baptisms, you name it, they are facilitating those things. So I want you to give just a, a really big round of applause for what the trustees put up in 2014, 2015. God bless you, and we could not do ministry at Lighthouse Wesleyan Church without you. He is, uh, I don't know how many hours he donated, but hundreds probably, weeks, months. So um, thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. We appreciate Steve retiring. So he can work harder for us. And it didn't work. Um, and uh, they're responsible for putting all the emergency lighting, which we will see a, uh, a demonstration of that in just a few moments. But before that happens, we have our next report, which is gonna be given by Linda, our treasurer. Please come up and uh, give her a hand, just because she does it. Who wants to be a treasurer? Our plan was presented and approved last May, and it actually worked pretty well for us last year. We had gains and losses all during the months, you know, each month it was a little different. But in the long run, we um, actually ended up with a positive on this, this year, this past year. So I'm sure it was So there was a whole variety of things that came through. But um, we had uh, almost $100,000 collected in time, which is what goes for expenses and operations. Um, monies, the remainder of that was like $17,000, um, which went to the bonds, the missions, the donations, that kind of stuff. We, um, $7,752 was given towards the bonds this past year. Some donate regularly in addition to their tithe, and it's amazing how a few dollars a week can add up, and that will just go towards our bond debt. Our bond debt. Um, we paid $102,000 off on our bond debt. Yeah. Which is awesome. yeah. and this week actually has noticed that we've done this. We've been in contact with them through letters and emails and things, and they actually acknowledged us in a, um, a commitment letter and wrote 
that I want to commend all the people at Lighthouse Wesleyan Church for making the bond program a priority and for keeping up with the paying out the invested fires. We still have outstanding bonds and we're looking at negotiating them and um, with the investors. So lower interest rates of 3% right now, we're at five, uh, four and a half. And this is encouraged by the district and it will save us about $2,300 a year. So um, that's going to be a tremendous savings for us. This congregation is so generous and it's so caring. Not only do you take care of our own, but we also reach out to those in need, both locally and globally, as you've kind of heard already from other reports. We made a total of $2,658 for missions this past year. Um, those monies, as you heard, went to um, the Ebola crisis, the also World Hope, the Gideon's um, Visit House was also something, you know, that, that we've done to name a few. We uh, supported Wayland and local um, Wayland and Springwater Fire Departments and ambulances through collections. We have driven for repairs, um, events, supplies. There's just all kinds of monies that come in that don't really kind of go into some of these numbers as well. Um, and it, you know, it's just great how you know, God's people just do it, and you should be very proud of what you've accomplished as a congregation. Downstairs, you may have noticed when you came in, there's a new bulletin board. Um, we're going to be having that set up somewhere downstairs. And this is, um, we're constantly looking for ways to cut costs to keep our finances on track. The board um, was created to let you know the needs of the church. People are willing to donate if they know what there's a need is for. So this is our way of letting you know what's going on and what we need. Um, it's got pockets with envelopes in it that explain the specific need and what we're going to help the church. But in it, it can be real small or large. There's there's all kinds of uh, variety on there. We're going to keep it ongoing. The donations, uh, present, future, you can do with money. You can do it by, one of the examples is stamps for TLC. It keeps our costs down. So you're post office and you pick up the next bit of the stamps and, and donate it to the church. That just helps um, keep costs down. So check it out today and look it over because we're going to change it all the time. So just keep, keep checking it out as you're coming through. Take the envelope if you feel like to do so. You can put it in the collection plate or you know, grab the donation up, whatever works. Um, if you have any questions about anything on there, you can see any of the finance team members. And so we we'll go on to the new year, it's really speaking. We go from it, um, May to April for our fiscal year. So we, we made a new plan, um, we adjusted, which was very similar to last year's plan because it did work for us. And um, out downstairs we'll have the um, specific reports and numbers if anyone cares to see them. There's copies that, we can make, that will be handed out later during the meeting if anyone can. Um, well, that's pretty much it. Month to month, I have to remind myself that it's God's money and God's plan. Monitors and the supporters, so stay faithful and He will provide. Your prayers, support, and acts that, are, um, that you've done or will help keep, have kept us going and strong. Um, the Bible says in Deuteronomy, give generously to Him and do so without a grudging heart. Then, because of this, the Lord our God will bless you in all the work and in everything you put your hands to. We've seen it thus far. I'd like to see it continue. Thank you. Thank you, Linda, for all that you've done. Wow. God bless. And all that you've done financially to make everything work, God bless you. Let's keep uh, going even past what we've done in 2014, 2015. We're about to give our report. So, nice <laughs> in case you feel we look like dressed up, A lot of churches, if you went to church, you see us that way and wonder what we look like this way. <laughs> All right, that is in small font. Okay, here we go. Already this morning, we've heard so many blessed reports about what God has done and His faithfulness to Lighthouse Western Church this year. Um, our God is doing a new thing. This 2014-15 season would find us uh, beginning our first co-lead pastor um, ever officially to lead a Wesleyan church in the Central New York District. Uh, so we're we've done something new. We've had a lot of fun. Uh, a cool fact is this: maybe we're the only husband and wife 
Catch 19 that speaks on any given Sunday morning in the continental U.S. that we know of. If you find another, let us know. We'd love to celebrate that too. All right. This is different. You know, so if you don't like me, you know, hold on a minute. She's coming. If you don't like her, wait a second. I'll be back. So, um, Pastor Cheryl and I are certainly excited about the many advantages that we have to working together for the local church. Um, it gives a different perspective of male and female. And if, and if you're in the congregation as, as a woman and you're, you're needing somebody to talk to on a personal level, you're not going to talk to me. And I'm, I, I'm not going to help you. You know, I'm a guy and we just think like that. We just like get over it, you know? <laughs> she, you know and my wife helps me get over a lot of things. <laughs> well, it's probably that comment later. <laughs> and and it just brings balance to the force. God's force. It's just, it's just a great thing to work with you. Um, we target one hour um, on a Sunday morning, just so you know this. And this isn't so that you can use your stopwatch every Sunday morning and be like, Oh, you're going past 11.30. I'm going to be next week. No, leave Jesus from the move, please. Amen? Amen? Okay, thank you. But that's our target goal. And then so that we can become double services. So if you're here this morning and you say, man, I wish we did that early service at 9 a.m. again, then you bring your friends so that we can stay full like this, Amen. and then we're going to be forced to go to that double service. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. <laughs> My next thing is to fix that. I spent an hour on that this week, and that's still In our vision to increase visibility to the message each week, we've been offering the sermon notes on each Tuesday. Try to get it out on Tuesday. Upload it onto the website. Let's say the website together, www.discoverlighthouse.org. I'll have you, it'll be memorized here before we're done. Oh. Oh. Month. Our goal is to have an edited video of the sermon available to everybody weekly. One of the visions um, that, well, one of the things we also implemented this year was to have a directory online. Many of you were asking for a directory. Many of you now are saying, how do I access the directory? So there's some paperwork downstairs. If you need that, it will be available. And um, if you're not a part of that, you don't, you don't know, I don't know if I'm in the directory, then there are some paperwork to fill out to be a part of that. And, I, and um, Heidi Dross has been helping us, and it's been fabulous. And she's been a great help getting a lot of that information up there. We are trying to get it all streamlined. We have like three entries for some people, and I'm not sure how we, that happened, but Heidi and I need to go through that and make sure that we've got what we need and everything up there. So if you see imperfections, you can either fix them yourself or you can let us know and we can fix them. And then we'll get some printed versions available so that those of you who don't have computers can also access and have a part of the directory. Um, one of the visions for this past year is to bring Children's Church back to the Lighthouse. Many of you have been asking about that. We cannot do that unless we have volunteer help to do that. And so um, we're also working on fine-tuning each of our teams and the responsibilities they have, creating new teams to help um, facilitate ministry within the church and outside um, to admission work outside of our community here. Um, it is, in your bulletin this morning, there's a volunteer form. We call that also a ministry menu. And we need each of you to fill that out, even if you're already volunteering and I'm in an area to kind of check that so that we know to keep your name on that list. Um, for that ministry. This will allow us to organize and plug people in where God wants to use them. So please fill that out and get back to us today, however, not right now, because um, we're not quite done with the service part. And so at the end, there's going to be a three minute block of time that you will have to fill it out. And if you don't have one, we'll make sure you get one before that time. So no panicking. It, it is your faithfulness in ministry that will take Jesus to a great community and provide lost hope, provide hope for a lost world. The General Superintendent, Dr. Joanne Lyon of the Wesleyan Church, has asked us to, as local churches, to begin to start new gatherings. One, we would love to see more gatherings formed here at Lighthouse. What is a gathering? A gathering is just a small group getting together of two, three, four, ten, twelve people, however many God leads. It could look like a football gathering when you share a devotional at halftime at your house. It could look like a quilting meeting or time to get together and sew and just talk together and have a devotional. It could be a monthly bowling afternoon in the winter for a few friends to get together and, and share about Jesus. 
It could be a cafeteria Bible study. Young people at your schools gather together. If you have lunch with a few friends, sit down together and talk about Jesus. Share a scripture verse together. Or a couple of you work together that can and work at the same place that can find a gathering to get together and pray for each other. Be creative. Let the Holy Spirit lead you in these gatherings. And when you do that, make sure you let us know so that we can um, we can pray with you and be excited with you as you start. Well, it has been a joy to be with you and, and get on this road of life. And uh, our theme this next year is Take a Stand. We're going to work at taking a stand in the next few minutes. I'm going to share a very brief devotional, and I see the time, so I'm going to keep it as short as nuclearly possible, okay? And uh, at this time, if I should come as prepared to give the Lord our tithes and offerings, um, we're going to now sneak this video in about the, uh, the lighting. Because see, we're not here at night, so we, we have to see what that lighting would have been like had we been in the middle of a service that went down. So, What if we're in the middle of an evening service? And this happens. How cool was that? Thank you, Steve and Colin Sick. Unbelievable. We can safely transcend the building with our very cool exit lighting to get to safety from any angle. Unfathomable. So we just pause right now to thank you for your diligence, hard work to hide wiring. Oh, wow, who knew that was up there? We can see all the way safely down the hallway, in the corners, down the hall. What? That is cool. Basement time, look at that. We ought to have an evening event where we just kill the system so that we can live on battery lighting from Steve and Colin Sick. We love you guys. Sincerely, Lighthouse Wesleyan Church. <laughs> I had a lot of fun doing that. At a senior citizen home, this 84-year-old woman had gotten out of shape. Anybody 84 and out of shape? <laughs> <laughs> Done that. She knew she needed to start exercising, so she decided to join the aerobics class for seniors. The first day she bent, she twisted, she gyrated back and forth, jumped up and down, and perspired for over an hour. But by the time she got her spandex leotard time, the class was over. <laughs> Reach back last week, real quick. We talked about kill switches to the Holy Spirit, right? What are the kill switches in my life that kill the power of the Holy Spirit from being able to work in my life? Have we worked on those this week? Have we seen some of those this week? Some of our disobedience, some of the times we're going to complain about things, some of the times we're breaking the circuit. It's not Him, He's available 24 7. It's always me. It's always me if there's something not happening in the Holy Spirit in me. Um, this week we want to really quickly, uh, and, and my wife bowed out of the devotional here, uh, the sermon, because she said, please, honey, can you do this? Because she's done all of that all week. She has been just 24-7 loading videos, making videos, editing my stupid videos, and all that business. And, and she's just, give her a hand for what she's done. She's gifted, and if, if, if she couldn't do that for any span of time, it wouldn't happen. Because I just had no idea what she's doing. And she's put out the light, so that's not Um Today we want to talk to you just quickly, and I mean, I'm going to jump through this super fast, it's only a few sentences. Take a stand for Jesus who took a stand for you. Take a stand for Jesus. And if you watched AD last week, okay. You watched Peter and John taking the stand for Jesus, and in that clip you're going to hear in this first segment how it ends. Acts chapter 5, 
27 and 32, the apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin, the Jewish leaders, to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders to not teach in this name Jesus. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with his teachings and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than man, rather than human beings. Do you know, all of our lives are filled with challenges and they're going to come with a question mark. Will I stand for God in this situation or will I conform to the world? In any given situation, you're faced with young people. Look at me, I'm right here. You're going to be faced with a challenge on a daily basis. And will I stand with God with what's about to fall off my lips or will I conform to the pattern of this world? And when we conform, we break the power that we talked about last week. That is a kill switch to the power of the Holy Spirit being able to work and bless your life. Amen? Amen. See it and understand it and let's continue to grow in it. Taking a stand is, is what a couple of our young people did this week, uh, last couple weeks in school. One of them uh, took a stand in science class for a procreation theory. Amen? Instead of your pro-evolution theory. And uh, one of our other young people took a stand in another social uh, dilemma of the day and really came out victorious and really left a mark in that area and left Jesus in this wonderful light that he should be in. Amen? Amen. He, taking a stand and going against the flow is not easy. The words that you say, do they make you stand out? And I'm going to use my children as an example. Josiah and Ezra were playing soccer this past week with a young man that they played with for years. And they, this young man, out of the blue, he's like, wait a minute. Do you guys swear? Like, ever? They're like, try not to. <laughs> what a pastor's kid. No, the answer was no. <laughs> and forget about the pastor's kids. No, no. And he's like, do that. Just, I never knew. I just dawned on man. I never heard you swear. Or curse. And I remember when Caleb was in, the, was in the public school, he had a friend that was just like, man, I'll pay you to swear, man. I'll, I'll trick you into swearing. And I was like, what is the thing? Why are you going to swear? I mean, what's the point? Anybody know? The, share with me after. What's the point? Yeah, there ain't, there's no point. So, um, shining the light is, is sometimes by what you don't do. Right? It, it's best illustrated by what you don't do. And it often takes time for the world to be like, hey, there's something different about you. But how do you have life all together? Why are you not rocked by your situation? Why are you not moved? Why are you so silent? What do you have I need? That's going to catch up with them. Maybe it's our actions. Everyone else is going to the bars after work. I'll be left out if I don't conform. Will you? <coughs> There's a Petra tune that says, I'd rather be a fool in the eyes of man than a fool in the eyes of God. Catch up with that. I'd rather be a fool... In your eyes, because I didn't do the things you, did, you all wanted me to do, than a fool in God's eyes for disobeying and breaking His heart and grieving His spirit. Does that make sense? Amen. I am not ashamed of the gospel, Romans 1.16, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Boom. There it is this morning. There's this sermon in its really small nutshell. If we could live this, I will not be ashamed of you, Jesus. I need to be filled with your power. I need to share your joy and your hope on Facebook and Twitter and in my, my text to others and in my phone calls and how I live my life. Lord, I would be this shining example so that your salvation will be available to those who watch my life. That's it. That's the sermon today. Now, I want you to open up your... Uh, bulletins and find your ministry menus. And so what my wife has done is created a 
three-minute countdown for us, complete with music, and we're going to pray about it right before you get into it. Name, phone, email, here we go, let's pray. Jesus, thank you for what you're doing in our lives, and we just ask that you continue um, in this ministry menu to raise us up, to take a stand for you by what we volunteer to do at Lighthouse Wesleyan Church to make this vehicle the most powerful V8 on the road. Lord, I pray that we would be a hummer, that we'd get off-roading, that we'd find the nooks and crannies out there like Nepal right now, where they're going out and they're needing to get out and find out where this earthquake shook. And we need to get there and intercept. Lord, right now, be with Nepal. Be with those um, people mourning. Up over 7,000 people are lost right now. And it's climbing. And it's and we just found some alive just yesterday. Lord, I pray that you just continue in that area. And Lord, continue in this room. That we would be those who shine the light and be Christ and be bold about it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sunday morning, Sunday school in the basement. All right, 9.30. Be there. Let's grow there. All right. When Annie goes into the middle, here, as, they're, as they're doing that, I'm going to give you the explanation of what's going to happen right now. There's going to be a 30-minute countdown. It's going to start in a few seconds right at the end of service. At the end of that 30 minutes, we're going to gather back up here for official voting, okay? Which will just, um, it should be less than a half an hour, probably more like 15 minutes. Hey, members or not members doesn't matter because the lion's portion of the entire annual meeting just happened on a Sunday morning. Isn't that cool? Is that yeah? Me, all in favor of doing that next year? Aye. 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 Uh, this is pretty cool, and it's neat to see what your church is doing, isn't it? And the people who are behind that, you now know how to network and get to some of these places that you might want to plug in. And this menu is all about that. All right? This menu is all about you saying, I want to get them all. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. If you, were, if you had to hold on to that, you couldn't, your ADD, you couldn't fill it out quite yet, fill it out and leave it on this stone or put it in my hand or my wife's hand so that we can make sure that we get those. And then we'll tally up everything and get you plugged in. All right? Downstairs, we got a cake for you that says, God is good, 2014-2015. Let's go enjoy some cake together. Then we'll get right back up here, 30 minutes.